Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. A convicted felon busted for trying to sell drugs and all of these guns at an Oakland County home. Investigators say a child was nearby while all this was happening, and that arrest tops our news tonight at 6. Good to have you with us. I'm Devin Skillian. I'm Kimberly Gill. Tyler Zolman is now facing charges in federal court for what was found in that Pontiac home. Grant Herms joins us live to walk us through this case. Grant. Kimberly Devin, this man was a felon who wasn't allowed to have a firearm. Instead, authorities found a pile of them in these pictures from his phone. The evidence here is so overwhelming, even Zalman saying in a recorded jailhouse phone call that the authorities had him dead to rights. Federal prosecutors naming this man, 31-year-old Tyler James Zalman, in a drug cooking and gun dealing scheme out of his home in Pontiac. The joint task force made up of federal and local law enforcement started their investigation at the end of last month after a friend of Zalman's reported someone had broken into their home and used a sledgehammer and crowbar to break into a firearm safe, stealing 15 weapons. Investigators later used a warrant on Zalman's home and found a number of weapons from pistols to shotguns to rifles. Even some left in the open in the living room while a one-year-old was present. These images found after a search of Zalman's phone, also revealing images of Zalman allegedly cooking crack and text messages to an unknown would-be buyer. Zalman texting, yeah, get me some crackheads, I'll hook you up. This is the best dope around, man. Everyone who tries it loves it. Extreme, Local force law enforcement analyst Darnell Blackburn saying these kinds of cases are some of the most dangerous for officers to make an arrest. You don't know what's in somebody's house. You never know. And so that's why police officers take extreme caution when they approach the house. That's why they don't park in front of the house. That's why they, they you know, approach houses, you know, covertly. And then the, the other part of this is that, you know, we don't want to harm an innocent person who's caught in the crossfire of somebody who doesn't care about themselves. Now, Zalman has been successfully arrested and is charged with a long list of felonies here, including five different gun charges and two drug charges. Interestingly enough, a child endangerment charge of any kind was not included on this list. Back to you. So, Grant, what kind of prison time could he be looking at here? That gets a little tricky, Kimberly, but when you look at federal statutes, he could be facing up to about 60 years behind bars. And again, mm -hmm. he is a felon, so that could also play into this as this moves forward through the court system. Okay, Back to you. we'll be following it. Grant, thank you. Now to something that has been an issue for people living near I-75 for years, the noise coming from the highway traffic. Now MDOT holding a meeting for people to weigh in on whether sound barriers are needed in more parts of Oakland County. The department has been studying the area from 13 Mile to Adams Road. Megan Woods went to Troy to get an idea of how people feel ahead of next week's meeting. Megan? Yeah, Devin, we're here where you can hear the uh, cars going down I-75 right now. We spoke to people who say it's just too loud, while other people say they've been living in the area for so long, they don't even hear it. It's one thing to drive on I-75 in Troy, but it's another to live along it. The, the noise level's gotten to a point where it's, it's, it makes sitting outside on your patio, like, not as enjoyable. It's like now you can hear it in the background, and, you know, we're like two blocks away from it, so where we're at, um, you can definitely hear it inside the house now. You know, the trees have got all the leaves on them. It's not quite as noticeable, but in the winter when they're bare, now you, really hear you can really hear it. <laughs> You can hear it inside, especially when you go to sleep at night. You know, you can just hear that white noise, what I don't know what they call it, but you can definitely hear the freeway noise a bit more prominently now at night, too. And some believe it has gotten worse over the years. It was always making noise, but it's a lot worse now, and they raised the height of the road, so the berm that we have behind us, you know, kind of defeats the purpose of it because now you got more noise going over the top of it, so it's just getting worse, I guess, is the point. The Michigan Department of Transportation, MDOT, did a study, and Tuesday is hosting a public open house to discuss results, including a presentation and answering questions. We're hoping that the noise study that's happening obviously continues and, and provides the results that's going to deliver the funding to put the noise wall up um, is really what the goal is. <laughs> And that open house is on Tuesday, starting at 5.30 in Troy at Troy Community Center. And if you can't make it in person, they will put that on uh, the city of Troy's website uh, after that April 11th open house. So reporting live in Troy, I'm Megan Woods, Local 4. Okay, Megan.
We are learning more about a massive fire this morning on Detroit's west side. It happened at a five-story apartment building on LaSalle near Linwood and Davison, hospitalizing 11 residents and displacing dozens more. One resident, a young mother of two, is now suffering a broken back and ankle after falling from the fourth story. Her children weren't home at the time, staying with a family member after a man was shot to death Wednesday in the same apartment building. They found the deceased body in there and from there, I guess this is the retaliation that all of us had to suffer. Well, authorities are continuing to investigate the fire and the murder for a possible connection. Now local for update, a Ferndale man facing charges for a shooting and stabbing involving deputies. Andrew Harvey is charged with assault and resisting and obstructing, causing injury. Deputies were there to arrest him at a home on Webster near 8 Mile and Woodward on Tuesday when he stabbed one of them in the leg. Deputies fired shots, hitting Harvey, and in fact, he's still in the hospital, though in stable condition. Nonetheless, he was arraigned today. A family says they are not going to give up their search for justice for a beloved brother and friend who was brutally murdered eight years ago. 69-year-old Bobby Ellis was shot and killed and his body burned beyond recognition. This was on Detroit's west side back in 2015. Today's family once again pleaded for help to find his killer. Priya Mann joins us live with more on their message. Priya. Kim Devin, this victim was a military veteran trained to defend our country, but in the end, he couldn't defend himself against his killer. Now his family is speaking out, confident someone knows something. He is gone, but his spirit is here. More than seven years after he was killed, the family of Robert Ellis is pleading for justice. Share your information and help us to get justice. We're no longer looking for closure. Closure expired five years ago. And it's going on eight years since my brother was brutally murdered. The day before Christmas Eve in 2015, their lives were changed forever. We want to stand up for Bobby Ellis to let him know that we haven't gave up. The body of Bobby, or Blue as he was known, was discovered in the 19,000 block of Archdale Street between West 7 Mile and Cambridge Avenue on Detroit's west side. It's a close-knit neighborhood. So people knew or either know what happened. The 69-year-old had been shot to death and his body was burned. A neighbor on Archdale Street was starting his car when he smelled smoke. After moving his vehicle, the neighbor found the body and called police. Over the years, the case went cold and the family turned to Crime Stoppers for help. We still miss him, we still love him, and you can rest assured we are not going to give up until justice has been served. And the family is really hoping someone will do the right thing. As a reminder, you will remain anonymous if you call Crime Stoppers and that reward money is paid out for information that leads to an arrest, not a conviction. That number, of course, 1-800-SPEAK-UP. Reporting live tonight, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4. Yeah, okay, Priya, thanks. A major Michigan nonprofit is suing the Biden administration, pushing for people with student loans to start paying them again. It's the Mackinac Center for Public Policy that filed a lawsuit demanding an immediate end to the student loan repayment moratorium. It took effect, of course, during COVID. It's been extended eight times. The Mackinac Center argues it puts nonprofits at a disadvantage because they use a federal debt relief program to help recruit employees. A moratorium is expected to end this summer. For the first time in about a year, the monthly jobs report came in lower than expected. The Labor Department says U.S. employers added 236,000 jobs in March. Economists were expecting about 239,000. The dip below expectations could be a sign the labor market is finally cooling off. The Fed has been raising interest rates to lower inflation, but a robust job market has been complicating those efforts. In the last 12 months, we've seen a net gain of more than 4.1 million jobs. Nice start to the holiday weekend. Take a look at that oh. shot. Live look downtown <laughs> on Detroit Gorgeous. on this Good Friday. Yeah. Yeah, let's get over to Forewarn Meteorologist Kim Adams with what we can expect for the rest of the holiday weekend, Kim. Look at the trouble behind you there, though. I know, Somebody's right. got I need it to worse explain than we do. This because this is not Michigan. That right. is Augusta, Georgia, where they have now suspended the second round until tomorrow. They had uh, suspended play twice this afternoon because of weather. Right now there are thunderstorms blowing up over Augusta to kind of orient you here. There's Atlanta over there and here's Augusta. There were three large trees that came down just to the left of the number 17 T this afternoon and they did just end up suspending it until 
tomorrow. And I went back and I looked at some of the highest wind gusts. The winds really weren't all that impressive, but enough to take down those three large trees right on the course. Uh, Augusta reported a 26 mile per hour gust, and uh, it looks like they're just going to have to play tomorrow. Weather does look better for the day tomorrow. 44 in Mount Clemens back at home. We don't have any complaints, although it is maybe just a little bit chilly out there. In fact, Port Huron only in the upper 30s right now, but we are going to warm up nicely. If you're planning your Easter Sunday, it will be chilly in the morning, but by noon we're at 51 and in the afternoon we climb to the upper 50s and then by 8 p.m. down to 49. We have a big warm up on the way and you're going to want to know all about it. And by downloading the forewarn weather app, you'll know exactly what's going to happen this week in your neighborhood. Just go to your favorite app store and type in WDIV. All right, Kim. Feeling the urge to do a little spring cleaning? Well, experts say the benefits are not limited to your home. See how all that sweeping and scrubbing may help boost your mental health, too.